Talking crypto and the blockchain, Bitcoin this morning is down, as you can see. But it's also down 40 percent from the all time high of sixty eight thousand dollars, which was reached back in November. It is now, as you can see, at thirty eight thousand uh, four thirty three. Joining me right now is I.O. Global CEO and Cardano founder. Charles uh, Hoskinson. Uh, IO Global is the company behind Cardano, the world's most advanced blockchain. Charles, great to have you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me on. So tell me about Input Output, your company, mm -hmm. and what you've been able to do in terms of the blockchain. Uh, I want to get to how it's solving uh, crises and, sure. and what you're doing to address it. But first, tell us about the business. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, I've been in the space since 2011. And back in the, that, those days, nobody cared about cryptocurrency. We were a very small club. We all kind of knew each other. And in, we've seen tremendous growth. And you growth. bought it at a dollar. Oh, well, I was there before a dollar. We were mining and trading <laughs> these things. But, you know, back then, you trade on, like, uh, Reddit and uh, Bitcoin Talk and these things. But uh, back in those days, uh, we were just trying to solve the problem of email for money. So we just wanted to be able to send value to people uh, easily and without counter party risk. And then what happened is people said, well, that's a great idea, but we want programmability. It's kind of like when JavaScript came to the web browser, then you got Facebook and YouTube and Amazon, all these rich experiences. So in 2013, I helped co-found Ethereum, and there we had smart contracts, and then suddenly we could do uh, crowd sales, and we could do NFTs and DEXs and all these things that you see today that are very exciting. Uh, but the problem with those technologies is they don't really scale. Uh, so when you start adding lots of users and you want to have a truly global system with millions, eventually billions, and solve real financial problems, whether it be microfinance in Africa, or remittances in El Salvador, or it be global trade or ESG compliance, these types of things, you just simply don't have the technology to do that at the scale of millions to billions of people. So what I did in 2015 is I took a step back and I said, all right, let's start a company and do first principles research. So we opened up labs everywhere, one in Tokyo at Tokyo Tech, one at University of Wyoming, University of Edinburgh, Athens, because I like the food, these types of things. And we wrote 135 papers, uh, mostly peer-reviewed, and we kind of built out the scientific back end, the scientific layer of the industry. And then we took those papers and transformed them into high assurance code, the same type of code used for jets and for rockets and these things, code that can't fail. And we created a protocol called Cardano and launched it in 2017. It's been up since then, and we now have 3.5 million users all across the world from... Wow. Ethiopia and Burundi and uh, Kenya, all the way to the United States. What an and incredibly Japan. successful story and yeah. uh, an incredibly success story at, at Cardano. But let me ask you about blockchain in general. Sure. What can blockchain do for global business and what areas do you think the blockchain is going to be most effective? So, anywhere where you have a consortium of actors who have to work together who don't necessarily trust each other but need to work together for the market to form is where blockchain is best at. So it can be a voting system. Uh, and you ask who counts the votes. It can be a supply chain system. You say who audits that to make sure it's ESG compliant or whatever your goal happens to be. Um, it could be a medical record system. Let's say you get in a skiing accident in Aspen. How does the doctor up there get your medical records if you're unconscious or something? So these are simple problems to state. But in collection, because of globalization or because of lack of trust, they're hard to solve. And usually we solve them by having a central institution, some bank or some body, and say, OK, they're in charge. But by being in charge, they have enormous influence. We saw this with social media, for example. They control speech in certain cases. So what you can do with blockchain is remove that central party and then basically have a common logic, and they all can work in a decentralized way instead. And that's what our industry has been slowly doing. And we started in finance. That was kind of the first application. And now we're looking at everything, healthcare, communication, uh, telecommunications, all these different marketplaces. Well, I mean, you just said, I think, what's one of the key words, and that is slowly. Mm -hmm. Do you worry that uh, international economies are uh, faster? Uh, in terms of coming up with the regulatory bound boundaries, in terms of coming up with usages that it's kept getting out of the away from the United States. Well, that's an interesting question. So we have seen a global trend where uh, the status of the dollar as the world reserve currency, because we print so much money and because of recent political events, uh, it has diminished quite a bit. But it's not like what happened when the British went to the American standard, where it would go from the U.S. to the Chinese standard. There's a global desire to move to a transnational standard that's not controlled by just one nation. Mm -hmm. uh, and nobody really wants, in the Western world, the Chinese standard to replace us. So blockchain is another example of a compromise solution. 
if you can't have another empire take over, can you have a transnational framework which is decentralized and no one actor has control over it that has fair rules for everybody and everybody's treated equally and no one can be left out of that order? Uh, Before you go, I've got to ask you a a little about crypto because you are also the co-founder of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Ethereum versus Bitcoin versus others. I mean, what should we understand about these different cryptos? Why did you uh, create Ethereum? Yeah, so they're generations. And so the Bitcoin was great. The problem with Bitcoin is that it can only do a limited set of things. You can kind of push value around, but there's no programmability there. That's why I use the example of the web. Before JavaScript came, you could build these beautiful websites, but you couldn't interact with them. You could just read the text. You could just see the pictures. And then when JavaScript came, then you could program them and interact with them. That's where YouTube came from and Facebook came from and so forth. So similarly with Ethereum, we added smart contract support. Then you had programmable money. You could issue your own money, you could build your own financial applications, Mm. and they don't require a bank or an intermediary. With Cardano, we just kind of took those concepts and then we said, how do we make them scale? How do we make them interoperable with the wider financial world? And how do we add governance layers into the system so that you can kind of figure out how to advance the system and evolve the system? And it's a pretty complicated task. I love it. Charles, great conversation. Congrats to you. Thanks very much much. for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun for us as well. Charles Hoskinson joining us there. Thank you, sir.